Okay. Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. How are you? How's everybody? All right, I see uh, five people here. Um, and let me quickly check how many are in the, uh, how many have signed into the discussion board. So uh, today, um, Tuesday, the 16th, and actually, you know, um, <clears throat> next Monday is the last day, right? You'll, uh, so we really have, uh, we have, you know, uh, four days left, and I hope I can cover the rest of the topics uh, within this, you know, time frame. I think it's going to be a... Uh, a very tough challenge. However, um, <clears throat> so I gotta do that one way or the other. Um, so we are. Um, so the last last item in the uh, financial statements, the is the ratio analysis ratio, and the ratio analysis is actually. Um, uh, ratio analysis is actually why uh, we did financial statements because it's the uh, cream, it's the cream of the crop, or it's the cream of the uh, 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 financial statements. Um, the fundamental analysis, the fundamental analysis, uh, culminates uh, with ratio analysis. So, uh, so what is uh, what ratios are we talking about? Actually, there are f uh, five categories in the ratios. Five categories. First category is uh, profitability ratios. Profitability. Second, uh, liquidity ratios. Liquidity ratios. Third, uh, asset management ratios. Fourth, uh, debt management ratios. And the fifth one is stock valuation ratios. So um, there are five, largely five categories in uh, uh, ratios. And in each category, uh, there are anywhere between two to five ratios, or sometimes even six. Uh, but we cannot go over every one of them. So we're going to only go over two major, two major representative ratios, two major representative ratios in each category. So first, uh, in profitability category, right? We're going to look into profitability category. Uh, the first one is return on assets. The second, return on equity. But there are also return on sales and return on, you know, uh, all these <clears throat> profit margin and uh, but they are relatively um, less important than return on assets and return on equity and they can be easily understood once you um, get the concept of you know um, uh, return on assets and return on equity and then in uh, liquidity ratios there are uh, current ratios and quick ratios Okay, and then in asset management ratios, uh, there are uh, inventory turnover ratio, uh, 
inventory turnover, and then fixed assets turnover ratio. Fixed assets turnover ratio. And in debt management ratios, there are you know um, times interest earned ratio times interest earned. Uh, you might wonder. I said times interest. Then you might wonder why isn't why is it x? Why isn't it uh, t? Uh, this doesn't mean x. This means you know how many times, right? Like you know how many times, right? Um, and then uh, uh, and then total debt to uh, you know. Uh, uh, debt ratio or total debt to total assets ratio, right? Total debt to total assets ratio. But then that is, you know, what is generally called uh, debt ratio. And then stock valuation ratios, you know, um, uh, quite often, you know, it's price earnings ratio, market price to book value ratio, right? So, um, uh, we're going to look into, we're going to start with the uh, uh, profitability category. We're going to start with the profitability category, okay? So everyone, uh, if you, because I'm, I'm, I need to uh, erase this, if you want to take a screenshot, uh, take a screenshot now, or, um, of course, it will be, uh, uh, the recording of this session will be, Posted later, uh, so you can you know uh, watch it over and over again. But you know if you want to uh, take a shot, you know, screenshot, uh, you're welcome to. Okay, now let me. Oops. Okay. Let me. Um. So oh, just, I just wanted to mention that, um, okay, these are the uh, people that are currently in there. Let me, okay, refresh. Uh, seven people only, seven. Uh, I'm just, I'm very concerned because we have only like four days left. And, you know, uh, 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 half the class is late. Uh, yesterday, I looked into uh, when I uh, checked the attendance, almost half the class was late. I mean, you know. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, we've been going. Uh, I, I've been telling you that, you know, collaborate session is not the main lecture, it's, the collaborate session is always the reflection. Main lectures are always, you know, uh, uh, through the uh, pre-recorded videos, but the pre-recorded videos are like you know uh, in, uh, released in advance, and and they uh, they expire right. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not just two days ahead because it, I also release the videos over the weekend, and if you think you know uh, weekend is you know uh, not the time to study, uh, then you are falling behind because. Uh, the lecture notes, uh, the videos that are released over the weekend will also, you know, uh, expire, um, f you know, uh, five days from that point. So a lot of, a lot of videos are, have already, um, have already been grayed out. In other words, no longer available. But since we have been, But for some people who think the uh, collaborate session is the main lecture, for them it's too late. These are already in you know, all. Uh, but you know because we um, these recorded videos are uh, released uh, sometimes too much in advance. Uh, they already they already go uh, get grayed out. For example, uh, something like this. Already, uh, you know, the last date was available was August seventh. That was, you know, so uh, 
Uh, and this was already grayed out, ratio analysis. But you know, since ratio analysis is our current topic, I made them, I put them back. But you know, um, it's actually it, today's the last day. Uh, it's going to be uh, visible, I think. Um, Okay, so uh, 16th, uh, which is today. So um, even later, I want you to uh, uh, catch up. You know? uh, I want to catch up. Uh, and also, um, if you didn't, you know, let's say even if they go, uh, they become invisible and they get grayed out, uh, still these, these, you know, videos will be still there. These are actually, you know, uh, as you can see, you know, last summer, right? Uh, lives, uh, videos, live session recordings from the last summer. So um, some of them will be uh, uh, still uh, uh, good to review the uh, current topic. And of course, uh, uh, in the financial statements alone, how many days? We have uh, uh, how many days? Three, four, six days, and including today is going to be seven days. So today, that's very long, but you know it's that important. So, um, uh, but today will be the last day of financial statements. Okay, so um, oops, what happened? I have it. I have it here, and I also have it here. What? What's going on? Uh, okay, I guess I can close one. So it's gonna be okay. All right. Uh, okay, six people uh, in here. So. <clears throat> Go back to the white whiteboard. So uh, uh, let's go into the profitability category. And uh, so the first, oops, why is it red? Return on assets. Now, return on assets, uh, literally, you know, um, it's basically a rate of return. And everyone, uh, I mean, if you're interested in uh, 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 finance, right? Or, I mean, rate of return is what we are after, right? The highest rate of return. I mean, uh, the lowest rate of return is, of course, the bank interest rate. But everybody wants to. Uh, if you're investing in a company, the rate of return uh, should be at least greater than the bank interest rate. So, uh, and if you think about it, what does this mean? Um, uh, it's basically a net profit because net profit is the uh, uh, like the uh, net profit is the uh, result or the fruit of the uh, operation of the company, right? Uh, but it's basically the result of the workings of the total assets, right? Makes sense? So of course you can rewrite it as uh, net profit is EAT, right? Earnings after taxes over total assets. But then you might wonder why is the ratio, uh, why is it the ratio between the uh, uh, net profit and total assets. If you think about it, total assets is the uh, 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 the machine. Total assets is the uh, uh, the machine that churns out the profit. Um, maybe you know uh, the best uh, best analogy is like a an apple tree or fruit tree, right? Suppose you are a farmer and you have a fruit apple tree, 
right? Then uh, this apple tree is your plant and equipment. Isn't that right? This apple tree is your uh, plant and equipment. It's like your fixed assets, right? Or for a farmer, this is your total assets. Just like, you know, um, and most of the total assets, most of the total assets is the fixed assets, right? Uh, uh, current assets or uh, working capital is relatively, relatively smaller, much smaller than the fixed assets. Think about it. If you're a farmer, your uh, apple tree is pretty much your, um, and if you have an orchard, an apple orchard, you have only apple trees in the orchard. Apple trees are your total assets, right? Uh, you may have you may have some you know uh, uh, working capital. Uh, why? Because you have to buy fertilizer. You need you know uh, some uh, uh, money for pesticide. Those things are uh, working capital, right? But pretty much everything is you know uh, uh, you know uh, apple trees that you have, and so basically this is. This is like the company. Your orchard is your company, right? And apple trees are your total assets. And so, um, uh, and uh, in the fall, uh, apple tree will bear fruit, right? Apples, right? So these apples are basically your profit, right? In other words, it's like it's like the uh, it's the output of the tree, right? Um, and the um, the output or the uh, the uh, product of the tree. And when you sell them, you know, uh, uh, well, that's basically. And after you sell them and uh, subtract the the expenses, right? Uh, the expenses that you incurred uh, to arrive at these, you know, uh, apple harvest, right? After subtracting that, that is net profit, right? So, um, uh, what we want to know is, uh, think about it. This is the uh, 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 not input, but it's more like a yeah. You can consider that input, uh, but it's more like the vehicle. Right? Isn't that right? Um, a company is a kind of vehicle to uh, uh, generate uh, profit for you. Right? Isn't that right? If you're the owner, if you're an owner of a company, right? Uh, one of the owners, one of the shareholders of the company. Company is what? Company is nothing but a vehicle to generate income for you. That's what a company is. Isn't that right? Uh, depending on, depending on, so you think, you know, the company has, you know, uh, uh, a particular, uh, this company is making, you know, uh, let's say, uh, uh, radio equipment, you know, military radio. You know, it's making military radio. Uh, but depending on, it doesn't have to be military radio. I mean, uh, you can always switch to something else. I mean, uh, something, uh, of course, you know, uh, something that, uh, that, you know, your existing technology allows, right? You can switch to, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what the company produces, but, you know, uh, of course, the company's core competency uh, company's core competency matters. I mean, if you are a uh, uh, chip maker, right? If you are a uh, chip maker, you cannot suddenly switch to uh, 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 EV, electrical uh, electric vehicle, right? You cannot suddenly switch to EV. Uh, if you are an EV manufacturer, you cannot suddenly switch to uh, uh, 
you know, a, a semiconductor, but you know, um, with enough capital, with enough capital, right, with enough financial capital, you can always switch to something else. So of course, it will take time. Uh, you will have to uh, uh, acquire that technology, but you know, basically, uh, how do you do that? Uh, you uh, you basically uh, steal the people. I mean, the companies that are, uh, uh, they, they did this a lot, you know. Um, uh, uh, late comers in the semiconductor, late comers in semiconductor industry, right? Or late, so uh, late comers in high tech. Uh, China is a late comer. If you think China is, you know, very developed, no, they they are latecomer in the high techs, and then you know they have been, you know, uh, trying to steal the uh, engineers, and you know, uh, uh, scientists and engineers from South Korean uh, companies like LG and Samsung, and because they are forerunners, they have, you know, uh, uh, Hynix, you know, uh, the semiconductor companies, and. The latecomers, you know, if they want to compete uh, immediately, they will obviously have to. Uh, 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 they don't have the, uh, you know, this uh, technological uh, 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 foundation. Uh, so what do they do? They they pay uh, very fat. They lure these people with very fat uh, paycheck. Right? We'll pay you double what they are paying you now. But you, so you, um, uh, you come to work for us. But you, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, industrial espionage is, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> involved. Because, you know, uh, but when you come to work for us, you bring the, the blueprint of this. You bring the blueprint of, you know, uh, uh, Galaxy Z Fold or something, and they've been doing this. China has been doing this, um, and that's not that's nothing new. I mean, it's industrial espionage, you know, uh, and uh, luring luring you know key uh, people with technology, you know, uh, key uh, uh, luring them with you know. Uh, very high uh, fat paychecks. Uh, that's uh, quite common. Uh, it's been quite common. But anyway, the point is, um, just like you know, um, company is a vehicle to generate income, right? Basically, you know, uh, uh, total assets, total assets. Uh, is the uh, size of the company, right? I've been telling you this over and over. Uh, the size of the company is determined by the total asset, total asset size, right? To total asset, the bigger the total asset size, then uh, the bigger the, uh, you know, size of the uh, uh, fixed assets, right? The bigger the size of the fixed assets, the bigger the uh, size of the plant, plant and equipment, and the bigger the size of the plant and equipment, the higher, uh, the bigger the production capacity, and the bigger the production capacity, you get, uh, you take uh, dominant position in the market. You take, you know, very dominant uh, position in the market, right? So um, think about it. Um, total assets is like the uh, apple tree. Fruit is the uh, the apples are the uh, output. Apple is the output, so the profit is the output uh, of the uh, apple tree. Then uh, think about it. In in life, uh, or in uh, so far, you know, if you have uh, in your life, I mean, uh, you may have lived, you know, twenty some years, you know, uh, uh, or maybe not, uh, but at every, um, you're just you know, you know, you're now a college student, and as 
uh, you the and one of the reasons you uh, picked BMCC or any other CUNY school, what is the uh, main consideration? Uh, you know, when you picked you know uh, CUNY school, isn't that the uh, cost? Right? Isn't that the cost of education? Right? Um, now there are other factors, you know, uh, SAT scores or you know, whatever. but. Um, so let's say you have excellent SAT scores, but why didn't you then, you know, uh, 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 with excellent SAT scores, um, normally you would, you know, try to apply for Ivy League schools. But you know, what is then, uh, what is another factor to consider? How much? How much does it cost? You know, Ivy League schools. You know, uh, uh, if you pay out of your own pocket, it's like six k a year, right? And most of it is room and board, right? About out of sixty k, I guess about uh, four uh, three k is room and board, right? That's uh, I mean sixty k, six k, six k's. About you know half of that or one point. Uh, about you know 60% uh, of that would be room and board, right? Um, so, um, and of course you know if you could if you get a uh, scholarship then you know good, uh, but you know if you are not uh, if you are not fortunate enough to get a scholarship, you c you know you can't possibly afford this I mean, for. You know, uh, four years, you know, that's 240K, right? Now, think about it. And then, um, also, what you consider is, okay, so after, after spending that 240K, you graduate, and what kind of jobs, what kind of jobs uh, are you going to land? Um, even if you graduate from Ivy League schools, if you majored in something like philosophy or history, some liberal arts, right? The chances of you uh, landing a high paying job is uh, very low. You can probably uh, uh, be a, a school teacher, like, you know, a uh, uh, middle school teacher. Uh, also, you know, uh, uh, but even you know, middle school, high school teachers now nowadays need you know a master's degree, right? So uh, the chances of you, um, you know, uh, after majoring, after majoring in you know something like philosophy or liberal arts, you know. Uh, landing a decent paying job is very low. Of course, if you uh, uh, if you majored in you know, like uh, finance and economics, business, you know, uh, uh, if you majored in finance uh, business uh, in Ivy League schools, uh, it's a different story. But you know, um, you might get if you um, you may land a job that pays, you know, anywhere between 80k to 100k, right? Uh, if you majored in finance and business from Ivy League schools. But if you uh, majored in something like, you know, uh, liberal arts, probably 40k, 40 to 50k max. Now think about it. This is a year, right? And so obviously if your, you know, if your annual income is 80k, uh 3 years if you, you know, uh uh if you 
don't spend any money <laughs> if you just uh, save all all that you know uh, paycheck in three years you will break even right in three years in other words you know uh, you more than uh, uh, you basically you know uh, pay for the uh, if you had a student loan uh, and uh, all, uh, that's principal only but you know uh, you know uh, even with interest in four years you can uh, pay for it or if you if you if you land a job that pays 100k in three years definitely you will uh, you know, uh, pay for that loan but if you um, major in philosophy and you know uh, barely land a job that pays enough even 30k to 40k a year and it's gonna take a very long time right uh, to pay back right so here's something uh, some concept of output to input ratio think about it when in your mind if you thought about you know so okay what is my you know uh, uh, annual income and uh, how many years is, is it gonna take for me to pay off right my student loan then if you ever thought about that uh, in your mind you already had the concept of output to input ratio right what is this output uh, this output is the literally the output of your finance and business degree from Ivy League school and then 20 240k is the input for that you know um, uh, for that degree so it's just like a gas mileage if you think about it uh, a lot of things in life um, we you may not you know, explicitly think, uh, you know, put it that way, but in, even implicitly, you always, you always do this measurement, right? You always measure this uh, output-to-input ratio, right? One good example is the gas mileage, isn't that right? And what is gas mileage? Gas mileage is, you know, uh, we all know, gas mileage is basically how many miles over how many gallons right so it's usually you know uh, uh, per gallon because you divide it by uh, uh, I mean if your if your car has a uh, of a large tank you know uh, uh, usually you know gas tank is you know uh, small cars have about 13 gallons I guess uh, big cars have like six, 15, 16 gallons, uh, the, the tank size, right? But let's say the, um, uh, the size of your uh, uh, gas tank is 20 gallons. And let's say uh, you fill up, you fill up, you know, 20 gallon, uh, your you know, gas tank, 20 gallons, and you, uh, you drive until you run out, right? And how many miles did you run, did you get? Uh, 600 miles over, you know, 20 gallons. Of course, if you calculate this, you get 30 miles per gallon. 30 miles per gallon, right? It's always per gallon concept because when you divide something by, you know, when you divide the miles by uh, gallons, uh, what comes out is, you know, per gallon, 30 miles per gallon. So, um, and obviously, you, uh, this is, there's a reason, you know, this is called, you know, uh, this gas mileage is also called, what is it called? Isn't it called fuel economy or fuel efficiency? Isn't that right? So it's called fuel efficiency. Why efficient? Efficient means the higher this number, more the more efficient it is. Isn't that right? The higher this number, right, the more efficient it is. So in other words, what are we trying to uh, find out here? Return on assets is a kind of output to input ratio. 
right? Your EAT is like, uh, your EAT is the output, right? Total assets uh, is like the input. I mean, you know, input is being used up, for example, just like, uh, uh, so it's slightly different from input uh, because if you put gas uh, in your car and if you uh, uh, drive until you run, run out of gas, uh, the input has been completely consumed, right? And input has turned into a, a output, right? But you know, uh, total assets is not exactly like that. It remains because it's the vehicle. It's the vehicle of production. I mean, it's the it's the uh, the means of production. But anyway, uh, it's the similar concept, right? It's the similar concept, isn't it? Uh, this is the output. This is the input, right? So the ratio will the ratio will tell you how productive, how productive or how efficient your uh, company is, right? Uh, also, it will uh, it's just like the apple tree. I've been you know telling this is like the tree apple tree, right? And this is like the apple. Right? So you can apply the same concept. I mean, uh, you have two apple trees. One, uh, they, they are basically about the same size. Right? Same size. Say two apple trees, about the same size. Right? Uh, two apple trees, apple tree A, apple tree B. But, you know, at the harvest, right, in, in the fall, uh, apple tree A, uh, a lot of apple. Let's say, you know, uh, you got um, uh, apple tree B, Which one is better? Huh? You can tell. Obviously, anybody can tell apple tree A is more productive than apple tree B. In other words, right? The input output to input ratio or the gas mileage of apple tree A output to input ratio, right? output to input ratio of apple tree A is greater than output to input ratio of apple tree B. Or, in other words, you can say return assets of apple tree A is greater than the return ROA uh, of apple tree B. Right? Make sense? So this is basically what a return on asset is telling you. Um, However, uh, then what is return on equity? Um, we all know uh, total assets consists of debt and equity, right? And so you can think of it this way. So you bought uh, this apple tree. Uh, when you bought this apple tree, the uh, 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 that was, you know, uh, let's say the apple tree was one million dollars. I don't know if there was, uh, but you know, uh, let's say you bought not just one apple tree, but you know, like you know, uh, a thousand apple trees. And you know, uh, if you bought thousand apple trees with one million dollars, still uh, one apple tree is like one thousand dollars. I don't know if it is, or you know, maybe if you bought ten thousand apple trees. Uh, each apple tree is still, you know, hundred dollars. Now, how did you raise one million? How did you raise one million? Uh, let's say you uh, borrowed four hundred k, borrowed from the bank. So it's that. That means you know, uh, uh, six hundred k is your equity out of your own pocket, your own money, six hundred k. Now think about it. Uh, 
at harvest, right? You have all these apples. These apples are like you know uh, your um, uh, these apples are like your your ibit, right? Uh, I mean to be more exact, because from the ibit uh, you will have to pay interest. You'll have to pay interest to the uh, uh, to the bank. You sell all these apples, and some of it is going to the debt holders or the bank as interest payment. Some of it is going to the government as taxes. And what uh, whatever is left belongs to you. And whatever is left after paying interest and taxes, that's EAT, right? So now this brings us to the, uh, 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 so, uh, Return on, then return on equity is basically um, return on equity is basically you know uh, literally net profit. Over equity, so it's purely uh, purely right. Uh, the efficiency or the productivity, it's about the efficiency or productivity uh, of your equity, right? Uh, your equity, uh, so, of course, we can rewrite this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now it's purely yours. Okay. Uh, so, then compared to that, now we can redefine ROA again. So uh, sometimes, you know, uh, it is better to define, uh, I mean, two, two uh, you know, uh, two measures of ROA. Uh, previously, I told, uh, I gave you EAT over total assets. But, you know, it's better to uh, actually, you know, uh, it's better to use this, EBIT over Total assets. Why? Uh, as I showed you a while ago, uh, when you know the apple tree bears apples, right? The fruit. Um, that's not entirely, you know. Uh, I mean, if you have debt, if you don't have any debt, no problem. But you still have paid taxes, right? Um, so um, it's not. Directly EAT, uh, those apples, some of it, uh, you know, when you sell those apples, you know, some of it will have to be paid uh, uh, as taxes. Some of it will, you know, uh, first, some of it will have to be paid as, you know, interest. Uh, and some of it will be, after that, some of it will have to be paid uh, as taxed. So, um, uh, so it isn't directly EAT, but you know, uh, uh, think about it. Um, the it makes more sense. It makes more sense to use EBIT uh, as the uh, uh, numerator for uh, ROA because you may have uh, you may have debt holders or bond holders or the creditors. And from the creditor's perspective, this, this has very little to do with them from the lender's perspective. Because anyway, EAT belongs only to the uh, shareholders, right? It doesn't belong to the debt holders. So from the debt holders' perspective, EAT is relatively you know, uh, of little uh importance or a little relevance, right? So from debt holders perspective, uh, knowing uh, ROA uh, calculated this way, uh, it's more meaningful from the lender's perspective. For, but from the uh, shareholders perspective, uh, this is this is meaningful. Or from shareholders perspective, this is more meaningful. But uh, 
if you the measure will be obviously um, uh, the ROA uh, this way, ROA found this way will be a greater number than uh, uh, this uh, ROA this way because EBIT is greater than EAT. And of course, uh, denominator, total assets is the same thing. So uh, whatever has a greater uh, numerator, uh, the fraction will come out uh, uh, greater, right? Now, also, um, if you think about, um, okay, uh, between ROA and ROE, which one do you think is greater? Between ROA and ROE and ROA. And uh, we'll just think about, we'll only uh, consider this. We'll only consider uh, this formation or this uh, formula. Which one do you think is greater? Anyone? Okay. It's a very simple uh, question, but this requires, you know, uh, straightforward logic, mathematical logic. So uh, if you answer this, you know, that's a one point question. Anyone? Which one is greater? ROE or ROA? Anybody there? Hello? ROA. Who said ROA? ROA? You, you think ROA is greater? Hmm? Uh, Yugen, uh, actually, I'm sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you if, if that answer is wrong, assets because of the fixed assets being turned over. No. Uh, well, but think about it. Uh, 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 if if that answer is wrong, uh, that already uh, then the other one is correct. I mean, it's ROE is always greater than R. Why? Um, it's it's a ratio. Ratio means, I mean, if we use, as I said, if we use uh, this formula, right? If you use this formula, EAT, the numerator is the same number, right? Both ROE and ROA, numerator is the same number. The, the company is an over net profit, right? But then the denominator, look at the denominator. ROE, denominator is equity, uh, ROA, denominator is total assets. So which one is greater? Of course, total assets is greater than equity because equity is only, uh, only a part of total assets. So think about it. When you are dividing the same numerator by uh, different denominators, right? The one that is divided by a smaller number will always come out bigger. Isn't that right? That's just a very simple and straightforward mathematical logic. You are dividing, uh, it's just like, you know, uh, you're dividing by, uh, you're dividing the same number 10 by 20 or 10 by 50. Which one will be greater? This one is greater, of course. Isn't it right? This is uh, EAT, right? EAT. This is equity. This is total assets. Total assets, because it's equity plus debt, right? Equity cannot be greater than total assets. Total assets is always greater than equity, right? So oh, it's just straightforward mathematical logic. So, okay, so that takes care of, you know, uh, uh, profit profitability ratios, right? Um, so we're moving on to the uh, current uh, uh, liquidity ratios, liquidity. Uh, so, um, as I said, we are only going over just two most representative major ratios, 
right? Not the, uh, uh, we don't, uh, we're not doing uh, too much, uh, not everything. Now, liquid, literally, uh, liquidity means what? Cash flow, right? Uh, we talked about this before. Liquidity can be defined on three levels. On the most basic level, it means, you know, how easily uh, you can convert any asset into cash, right? Uh, on the second level, it means cash flow. For businesses, right, uh, uh, cash flow is a very important concept because with, you know, uh, 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 if you have, if your cash flow is very tight, you can, uh, you're at risk of going bankrupt, default, and, you know, you can default and go back easily, right? Uh, so if you have, uh, remember, you know, in the uh, uh, balance sheet, in the current assets, uh, in the current assets, all those line items are basically liquid, right? Cash, cash equivalent, uh, stocks and bonds, right? The marketable securities, right? Stocks and bonds, uh, promissory notes, accounts receivable, they are all liquid assets, meaning they can easily be liquidated. They can easily turn into uh, uh, cash. And if you have a large, you know, a uh, very good, um, if you have uh, large uh, uh, current assets, uh, which is also called working capital, if you have large current assets, then uh, uh, you are less likely to default, right, or go bankrupt. But then how, how large should it be? How large? I mean, your company, uh, think about it, total asset size, if you look at, if the company has a very large, uh, big total asset size, that means a huge, big company, huge company. If the total asset size is, you know, like uh, $10 billion, obviously it's a huge company, right? Um, So-called large cap, right? I think, you know, uh, up to uh, $5 billion total assets, uh, that's called, you know, uh, mid-cap, right? Uh, and above $5 billion uh, total asset size, that's called large cap. So a company with, you know, $10 billion total asset size, uh, obviously, uh, their current assets, their current assets would be big. Probably, even if it is, you know, uh, 20% of this, that's two billion, right? Even if it is 20% of the total assets, that's two billion. But you know, if the company is small, with a total asset size of just about 10 million, right? 10 million. If it is 10 million, right? And even if uh, there. Uh, even if 50% of, 50%, even if, you know, uh, their current assets is the 50% of their total assets, it will only be 5 million compared to, uh, it will only be 5 million. So compared to uh, uh, the other company that has $2 billion of liquid assets, I mean, uh, this is small, but just because they have smaller, you know, uh, total asset size, and uh, so consequently they will have smaller current assets. I mean, that would make it more. That would make their company more prone to uh, this company, smaller company. That will that will make this company more prone to a bankruptcy? Huh? No, not at all. Why? Um, it all uh, it all depends on uh, their current ratio. What is the current ratio? Ah, well, current ratio is basically you know the ratio between current assets and current liabilities. Okay. Now think about it. 
current assets is also called current assets current assets is also called working capital working capital right uh, in other words that's the capital uh, that you need um, uh, to you know run the company uh, for uh, you know uh, for every uh, uh, that's the capital needed for working in other words um, you need to pay you need to purchase the raw material you need to pay for this you need to pay for that and what you need to pay for that's in the short run that's what that's current liabilities right uh, of course, in, among the current liabilities, there are notes payable, accounts payable, accounts payable, right? Accrued, you know, taxes, accrued wages and taxes, things like this. Now think about it. Um, so um, the point is, as long as your current assets are greater than current liabilities, right? You won't go bankrupt. Isn't that right? You won't you won't go bankrupt as long as uh, this current assets, right? So in uh, in other words, that's called you know um, uh, in other words, current assets minus current liabilities, as long as this is positive, right? If this number is positive, you won't go bankrupt, right? And that's called net working capital. This difference is called net working capital because literally it's net working capital, net of pay, short term payments, right? Net working capital. But then, oh, just uh, if you can barely make this payment, right? Uh, I mean, if you can, that means, you know, if it is zero, if this networking capital is zero, what does that mean? Current assets is exactly the same thing as current liabilities. Obviously, uh, you barely made the payment, but then there is no zero networking capital, nothing left to make, you know. Uh, uh, in other words, you just used all your ammunitions, right? And you quelled, you quelled the, uh, the enemies right now, but sooner or later there will be more enemies coming at you and you you used uh you may have you know just quelled the enemies for now but what if there are more enemies coming uh, you you're out of ammunition right this is not good isn't it right you killed off all your enemies right now but you know there is you no know, reinforcement of enemies then you can't uh and you are out of ammo uh that's the problem so um if if you have exactly the same amount of current assets as current liabilities then this networking capital will be zero and this ratio will be one which is not good obviously that's not obviously not good so what is a good number for this ratio the good number is at least right greater than two Right? Equal to or greater than two. At least it should be equal to two. So that means uh, you just, you know, uh, 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 you just, you know, uh, uh, you just thwarted and quelled all your enemies right now, for now. Uh, and you still have as much as as much ammo as before. So even if there are more enemies coming, uh, you can handle that, right? So this number should be greater than two, right? That's the rule of the thumb. So it doesn't matter how big the size of the total assets is. I mean, uh, in, uh, remember the example of um, $10 billion company and $10 million company, right? Even if the total asset size is $10 billion, 
if that company's current ratio is uh, uh, below two, right? That's not a good company. And even if you know the smaller company with ten million dollar asset size, uh, if it is current, if its current ratio is greater than two, uh, at least this company is less likely to go bankrupt than the uh, ten billion dollar company. Right? Makes sense. This is what the current uh, liquidity ratio, especially current ratio, is telling you. Then. Um, uh, uh, so uh, still uh, liquidity uh, liquidity category. So that's what the current ratio is. The second one is called you know quick ratio. Quick ratio is also called uh, acid test. Another name for that is acid test. Acid test. Is what litmus paper, you know, uh, you know, uh, acid test is, you know, uh, you probably learned this in elementary school. Dip uh, the litmus paper in the uh, acid, then it, uh, the, the color changes. And so, acid test is actually, you know, um, uh, it's a metaphor for urgency, right? When you have, when you are in urgent need of, you know, making a payment. Uh, 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 Quick ratio is uh, a good way of measuring that. So what is the quick ratio? Quick ratio is basically current assets minus inventory, inventory over current liabilities. Now think about it. Why subtract the inventory? Uh, in the current assets, right? In the current assets, we all know current assets consist of cash and uh, cash equivalent marketable securities, right? Marketable securities, just stocks and bonds, promissory notes, uh, uh, ah, P notes, I'll just write P notes, promissory notes. This is why I've been telling you, don't be verbal. Don't write promissory notes. You can just write P notes. It takes time, first of all, to spell it out, to spell it out completely, thoroughly. It takes time. And it's not sharp. It's very stupid to spell out everything and you know, you know, waste time on that. Uh, just P notes, good enough. Uh, uh, and then uh, accounts receivable. Don't spell it out, accounts. ACC receivable, that's enough, right? Uh, the professionals in this field will all, you know, automatically understand what that means, right? Now, and then accounts receivable, and then inventory, right? That's what the current assets uh, consist of. But then think about it. Um, these, uh, they are all, you know, current assets are. Uh, I told you, liquid assets, they can easily, uh, current means, you know, uh, liquid, current means running, uh, uh, liquid. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, the, uh, they are ca cash, you know, is already, you know, uh, cash, marketable securities, stocks and bonds, they can easily turn into cash, promissory note, accounts, they can easily turn into cash. The only thing, inventory takes more time because inventory is uh, physical in nature <laughs> because inventory is merchandise, right? Or uh, raw material, it takes time. I mean, they are, it can be liquidated, but it takes, it's, it's not, it, it cannot, it may not be immediately, it cannot be, it may not be immediately liquidated. liquidated. It, it will take time. So if you're in an urgent, urgent, uh, uh, need an urgent situation to make a uh, payment. I mean, the payment due date is just, you know, tomorrow. Inventory cannot be liquidated by tomorrow, but uh, all the other things can be liquidated, right? Uh, before tomorrow or by tomorrow, you can make the payment, right? You know, so that's why it is called, you know, uh, acid test or quick ratio, 
quick, really, you need, you know. So uh, then we know current ratio must be, uh, the rule of thumb is it must be greater than two. Obviously, uh, with the quick ratio, you cannot expect the same, you know, uh, uh, same number. So with the quick ratio, um, the threshold, right? The threshold for quick ratio is greater than one, right? In other words, um, after making uh, this quick uh, payment obligations, after meeting this uh, quick payment obligations, you, uh, so let's say you used up all the uh, uh, ammo, but inventory is still left. Inventory is what? It's not, uh, let's say you have, you know, uh, uh, machine guns and, you know, uh, uh, assault rifles, you know, like, you know, uh, they are immediately, they can be used, but, you know, uh, uh, inventory, whatever is left is not like firearm, uh, it's not like, you know, rifle ammo or, you know, uh, machine gun ammo, but it's like uh, 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 rounds, shells for, shells for mortar, mortar shells, mortar shells, and you don't have mortar. <laughs> uh, uh, if it is mortar shells, um, or uh, uh, you cannot use it on your you know, uh, uh, small firearms, but at least you can throw it if you don't have more tar, right? You can throw it. Or um, uh, while uh, the enemy attack has let up, you can, you know, uh, uh, you can check. You can, you know, uh, search around you and see if there is any more tar uh, abandoned, you know, uh, from the uh, previous battle or whatever, right? You can still have, you know, uh, uh, something to, uh, you know, uh, cope with your uh, uh, next, you know, enemy attack. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, quick ratio. Now that that wraps up the uh, discussion about the liquidity ratio, and the time is now 4:11. So I think it is a good time uh, to take a 10-minute break at this point. Okay, so let's take a 10-minute. Uh, reconvene a little later.
All right, we're back. We're back. So, um, uh, the, uh, so we talked about, you know, the first two categories of ratio variables, right? Uh, first one is product. Uh, profitability ratio, second, liquidity ratios, third one, third category is asset management ratios. Okay, asset management. So, what, you know, uh, what, what is that about? First one is, you know, uh, uh, um, Uh, inventory turnover ratio and the second one is you know fixed assets turnover ratio now if you think about it uh, inventory is uh, inventory is part of the uh, current assets, right? The fixed asset is fixed asset. In other words, fixed asset is non-current assets. So basically both, they represent, you know, uh, these, you know, uh, uh, both categories of assets, current and non-current, right? Uh, and then uh, what is asset management? In other words, you know how uh, it's another way of saying how productively uh, are the assets being used? How productively, right? So inventory is basically you know uh, uh, raw material, goods in process, and finished goods for uh, manufacturers. But for retailers, inventory is all finished goods. And if you think about it, uh, and I, I talked about this before, uh, if inventory, um, you know, um, you begin, uh, uh, suppose you are a retail business, right? And the retail business, uh, I talked about this before, start the retail businesses, start the quarter, right? This is the uh, time. This is the inventory level, right? So the retail businesses start the month or quarter, right? With... Um, at first with the beginning beginning inventory, right? Remember, beginning inventory. Talk about this. Beginning inventory, which is, you know, basically the ending inventory of, of the last quarter, right? And uh, you don't, you know, uh, um, throughout this quarter, you have basically average level of sale, right? average uh, level of sale or revenue. Sale is revenue, right? Uh, average, you know, uh, uh, level, uh, sales level. Or uh, So if beginning inventory is way below that, uh, you have to uh, uh, restock or replenish that level. So uh, you order, I mean, if the average is like $100,000, $100, average sale is $100,000 a quarter. Uh, and let's say that's, you know, uh, in uh, cost terms, in, in, in other words, in the CGS is 100K. So then the, uh, uh, the counterpart, the uh, revenue side, uh, in price side, the revenue would be probably, you know, 150K or whatever. But let's say um, that's the average uh, level of inventory per quarter. And so you replenish the, you know, uh, the gap. Uh, you restock, right? You stock up uh, 
the gap, and that's called net purchase. Right? Remember, that's called net purchase. And uh, if it is, you know, normal ordinary quarter, right? If you are having an ordinary quarter, so by the end of the first quarter, right? Uh, quarter, whatever quarter, um, you will. Uh, I'll put it. Uh, if your quarter goes. Uh, like, you know, uh, ordinarily, right? Uh, if your quarter goes normal, by the end of the quarter, uh, this level uh, from, you know, 100,000, you will draw down on the inventory and you will, and uh, the ending inventory will be uh, whatever, you know? Uh, uh, and then that ending inventory will become the beginning inventory of the next quarter. <clears throat> So that will usually be the normal uh, case, but uh, if the business is good, right? If the business is uh, during this quarter, if the business has been really good, then what's going to happen? Uh, uh, this inventory level will uh, first, you know, um, you will sell it off, right? the inventory level will be down to zero. <clears throat> then you reorder. You will have to, uh, again, replenish or restock uh, all the way up to, uh, you know, uh, uh, this 100K. And the business was especially good during this quarter. So uh, uh, you, your inventory is depleted, right? Your inventory is depleted, sold out. Uh, so you order again and restock all the way up to, uh, you know, 100K. And then uh, the inventory gets sold out, right? Then uh, during this quarter, by the end of this quarter, what happened? You're, you sold your uh, regular level of inventory three times. In other words, um, it's called your inventory turned over three times, right? Your inventory turned over three times. Um, turnover means you replaced it, right? If the inventory turned over, then you replaced it once, right? And then uh, if it turned over three times, right? You replaced it three times, right? So the higher inventory turnover ratio, right? As inventory turnover ratio, uh, the higher the uh, inventory turnover ratio, uh, the more productive, more productive your inventory was, right? Your inventory, uh, more productive uh, your inventory was, right? Meaning, you know, uh, 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 you know, that, you know, it, it's self-explanatory. That means, you know, um, uh, so uh, so this is what inventory turnover ratio is. Okay, and then next is fixed assets turnover ratio. Fixed assets. Now, from in fixed assets are basically, you know, uh, your um, uh, plant and equipment, your plant and equipment. So, from inventory turnover ratio, I mean, uh, you apply that concept. So, what does that mean? The, um, the plant and equipment turns over. I mean, can plant and equipment turn over? Uh, yes, it can, but it will take a very, very long time for your plant and equipment to turn over because your plant... Uh, your inventory is merchandise, but plant and equipment is not merchandise. It's, um, it's not like it can get sold. It can get sold out or, you know, uh, that's not that's not what it is. But think about it. If, um, suppose you're a lawyer and the lawyer's fixed assets would be what? Uh, I mean, if you're a lawyer, you will have an office 
and in your office, uh, your fixed assets would be something like, you know, uh, uh, computer, uh, Xerox machine, Xerox, uh, Xerox, you know, uh, and then copier, right? And then, you know, uh, 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 fax machine. I mean, these days you probably don't even need fax machine. I mean, it would be Xerox and fax all together. Well, you know, you can uh, use, you know, emails. But anyway, um, and then file cabinet. Of course, these days, you know, all these files are not, uh, I don't know, uh, some some people will still, you know, uh, have hard copies. And then so they need, you know, file cabinets. But, you know, uh, these days, everything, you know, uh, in PDF, uh, they can, you know, uh, turn everything into PDF and just, you know, uh, <clears throat> save it on your computer. So you probably need some uh, external hard drive. Uh, not just because of uh, the storage uh, size, no, uh, not just because of the size of the storage, but also for security. I mean, if, if you may um, uh, uh, save it in the cloud, but then, you know, what if the cloud gets, you know, uh, inf infiltrated, right? Uh, if you save on your hard uh, external hard drive and you just disconnect it, uh, take it with you, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, they cannot break into your, you know, um, most sensitive information or whatever. But think about it. These um, these are the lawyers, you know, fixed assets, right? These are the lawyers' fixed assets. And if uh, think about it, if the lawyer does a good job, he will get a lot of cases, isn't it right? If the lawyer does is very good, he will get a lot of cases and with a lot of cases case numbers go up with a lot of cases his revenue will go up too right revenue will go up and uh with a lot of cases and uh, increasing revenue the um, all these fixed assets Depreciation of fixed assets, in other words, wear and tear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wear and tear of the fixed assets will go up as well. Isn't that right? Um, if the lawyer, if the lawyer doesn't get many cases, uh, his revenue won't go up, and there will be very little reason these, you know. Uh, 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 computers will be uh, not used that much. You know, uh, uh, Xerox and fax machine won't be used that much, right? Uh, file cabinets will hardly be opened and closed, right? <laughs> if the lawyer isn't, you know, uh, you know, uh, doing well. Uh, so they will still remain in mint condition. The file cabinets are still good. But if the lawyer gets a lot of cases and he's using, then that means he, he will be using his Xerox machines, you know, copiers, you know, a lot. He's going to be using uh, his file cabinets a lot. And as you use file cabinets a lot, you know, it's, it means a lot of opening and closing, opening and shutting, you know. You uh, slam the uh, uh, file cabinet, you know, you slam the drawer, file cabinet drawer, it, it gets, you know, slammed a lot of times. So what happens? As the uh, the usage of these fixed assets go up, wear and tear goes up, wear and tear. And if it wears and tears, you know, um, in other words, they break down. If they break down, uh, uh, what, will, uh, what will he have to do? What will the lawyer have to do? He will have to replace them. If they break down, he will, he will have to replace them. So uh, uh, think of it this way. Uh, if the lawyer gets a lot of cases, uh, all these fixed assets also contribute, right? The fixed assets are not idling. When lawyer works hard, he gets a lot of cases. Uh, these fixed assets get used, they, and they also co contribute. They also contribute to the lawyer's revenue, right? 
they also con contribute to lawyers' revenue. Therefore, uh, the more they get used, the more likely they will turn over. The more likely they will turn over. Of course, it will take uh, it will take long time. I mean, if, uh, if this is not if this is manufacturing, the it, the fixed assets are plant and equipment, and it will take a very long time uh, for the the plant and equipment to turn over. But actually, you know, uh, uh, every every day, uh, plant and equipment wears and tears little by little. Right, because as you uh, so, it may not completely turn over, but you know by a fraction. You know, I mean, what is depreciation? Depreciation means you know uh, wear and tear. Depreciation means lowering of the value of the asset. Why? Why the uh, value of the asset goes down? Be with because of the usage. With wear and tear, the value has to go down because with wear and tear, uh, the productivity also goes down. So. Uh, the usage of the fixed assets contributes to the uh, revenue. So even though it doesn't turn over completely, uh, fraction, partially, you know, the fraction, every quarter, there is depreciation. That, uh, 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 fractional, fractional turnover. Isn't that right? And after, after probably 15 years, it will uh, turn over. Uh, uh, com once completely, right? So that's the uh, uh, concept of fixed assets turnover ratio, and all of these ratios. Think about it: um, inventory turnover ratio, fixed assets turnover ratio. Uh, how do you know these? Uh, the higher the number, the better it is. But how do you know if if the number is high? How do you know if the number is high or low? Well, you always compare it with, you will compare it with industry average, right? The benchmark is the industry average. These ratios have industry average. And if it is higher than industry average, then you're good, right? Uh, if it is lower than industry average, then uh, you need to improve in this area. Also, think about it. Um, other than uh, liquidity ratios, liquidity ratios, other than liquidity ratios, right? Liquidity ratios have their own, you know, uh, bottom line. We know uh, current ratio, current ratio, it has to be greater than two. Uh, quick ratio it has to be greater than one. It has bottom line. Uh, what about the prof profitability ratios? Return on assets, return on equity. How do you know if it is good or bad? Uh, compare it with the industry average. And if it is higher than the industry average, then uh, it's good. Otherwise, not good. And even the liquidity ratios, um, although it may, this is bare minimum. What this means is it's the bare minimum. Let's say current ratio is 2 or 2.5. Okay, that means you met at the bare minimum. Uh, you still need to compare it with the industry average. For uh, uh, if this number is greater than two, but still uh, like 2.5, but uh, still lower than the industry average. And if the industry average is uh, like six, then you still need to improve, right? Make sense? Uh, I think someone turned on the microphone and uh, probably uh, was trying to uh, ask a question. I mean, was there um, anybody wanted to uh, ask a question? Hmm? Was there anyone who wanted to ask a question? No? I heard some, you know, uh, a background noise, you know, uh, static noise, you know, so I thought someone turned on the microphone. All righty. So if there's uh, no uh, question, then, you know, that, that's you know asset management ratio. So we now move on to the uh, debt management ratios. Debt management. Okay. So okay, what's that? Um, so debt management in debt management category, right? Um,
we have uh, times interest earned ratio and uh, total debt to total assets ratio. Now, total debt to total assets ratio is simple. It's easy. Uh, total debt, right? Uh, over total uh, total assets. So it's basically, you know, uh, you remember the uh, capital structure is the debt ratio in capital structure. You know, in other words, you know, uh, how much of your total assets is debt? And then the one minus that will be equity ratio then, because then it will be equity over uh, total assets. It's not, you know, so it's easy to understand, but uh, think about it. It's also called leverage ratio. Leverage, what does that mean? Leverage means, you know, uh, using debt, okay? Why is, why is leverage, uh, why is using debt called leverage? Because actually, not a uh, 100% equity company, 100% uh, equity financed company is not a good thing. In, in other words, you know, if you don't, uh, if you're, you know, 100%, uh, if your total assets consist of only 100% equity, then uh, your um, uh, uh, earnings, your earnings per share, eh, or return on equity, your earnings per share or the return on equity will go down if you don't use debt. Debt will lift this up just like the uh, uh, lever and fulcrum, right? Just like the lever and fulcrum. That's why it's called leverage, right? Um, your return on equity and earnings per share will be boosted in other words, your profit and return on equity will be boosted by uh, uh, leverage or, you know, or using debt in your, you know, uh, total uh, capital structure, right? So um, that's why it's called leverage ratio and not hard to understand. What is this? Times interest earned. So <clears throat> this was what was, you know, when I was an undergrad, uh, 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 I mean, you know, uh, as an undergrad, I didn't do uh, economics or finance. So uh, right after that, you know, as I, you know, I started on, uh, as I started my graduate uh, school, I, uh, I heard, you know, times interest earned. And I was scratching my head. Why? What does time? I thought this meant, meant you know, time. No, it was times. Times means what? How many times? Right? How many times? So uh, now then it made sense. How many times the interest payment, interest payment has the company earned? That's what it means. How many times the interest payment right, has the company earned? So what this means is earned means EBIT. Right? Why? Because EBIT is your earnings before paying interest. Isn't that right? And so think about it. <laughs> your EBIT must be greater than, obviously, your EBIT must be greater than interest. I mean, if in our example, uh, you saw this, I mean, if it is, if it is, uh, Less than interest, then you can't even pay interest, and you will default. You will default, and that could cause that could be serious. That could, you know, uh, cause a serious problem because if your creditors are not happy with it, uh, they are not going to give you a leeway. If they don't give you a leeway, uh, then uh, you will be uh, forced into bankruptcy. Right, and Chapter Seven bankruptcy is, you know, uh, uh, a terrible one. Um, if the creditors decided to give you leeway, then that's chapter 11. Chapter 11 bankruptcy, that, that means, you know, they are not kicking you out, uh, but they will, um, the management will be kicked out. Management appointed by the by you, the shareholders, will be kicked out. And the uh, um, 
the court appointed management will uh, work for the creditors, right? Uh, not for the owners of the company, but for the creditors, right? Because they are hired by the creditors, right? Um, so the point is, of course, then, you know, what kind of business cannot generate even, you know, uh, uh, what kind of business can not generate uh, EBIT as much, even as bigger than, you know, uh, uh, interest pay? I mean, if a company cannot generate uh, uh, even the interest, then such a company uh, is not viable. Such a business is not viable. So the point is, uh, if EBIT is equal to int interest payment, the ratio will be just one. But we don't want it to be just one. It should be, it should be much greater, because after paying out the interest, you will still, uh, after paying out interest, you you still want a positive EBT, right? And still a very good EBT, so that you know you'll pay uh, taxes and still. Uh, have much left for EAT. So that's the uh, meaning of times interest earned ratio. And so it's basically EBIT to interest payment ratio, right? EBIT to interest payment ratio. And then, so then, you know, how do you know uh, uh, if it is good? Of course, always, you know, um, times interest earned. So again, this is not X, it's times, uh, should be greater than the industry average. You always compare it to, uh, with the industry average, okay? Industry average, it should be. So that, that's, you know, um, uh, asset management ratios. And the, uh, then uh, finally, the uh, stock valuation category so in stock valuation category, there is price earnings ratio and market price to book value ratio. Now this price means market price, uh, and the market there is a difference between market price and book value. And uh, first of all, when we say a uh, price, uh, it can mean uh, uh, there can be three uh, types of prices. One is for stock price. Uh, there is a market price. Market price is basically determined by uh, demand and supply. And then there is a uh, book value. You know what book value per share is, right? Book value per share. Uh, it's equity divided by number of shares outstanding. But this is always past data. Past. Because uh, to collect data, to collect and compile data, uh, uh, this quarter has to end, and only after this quarter has ended, you can uh, compile this quarter's data. So when the data comes out, uh, it's already passed. And then until the next end of next quarter, then we will, um, uh, there's three month gap, right? During this three month, uh, this cannot be updated. Uh, this this cannot be updated real time because it's still based on uh, the uh, last quarter's data. So by the end of this quarter, uh, this information, this book value per share, will be three months outdated already, three months outdated. You understand? Now, the market price is always, you know, uh, most current, but market price is crazy. Market price is most of the times irrational. Right? Market price cannot be, um, why? Because market price is uh, whimsical. It, it's, it's swayed by so much noise, right? So much noise. In other words, it's not uh, the valuation based on the fundamentals. It's not the valuation based on the fundamentals. And then uh, uh, there is, you know, uh, intrinsic value. Third one is intrinsic value. So V, intrinsic value or rational price or fair value, fair price. Why? Uh, intrinsic value is based on the fundamental factors, fundamental. Okay? 
Well, you know, this is, you know, uh, uh, this is the area of valuation that, you know, uh, uh, we're not, you know, uh, none of these, none of these has anything to do with the uh, intrinsic value. So, and this is what uh, we do in finance 100 or finance 300. So uh, not in this, uh, not in this uh, class. So we're going to just, you know, go over. Uh, so basically, you know, uh, this is book value, uh, right? Market price. So then what is the uh, meaning of price earnings ratio? So if you think about it, price earnings ratio was actually market price over divided by earnings per share. And we already know what earnings per share is. Right? Earnings per share is EAT divided by number of shares outstanding. Earnings per share. So obviously, uh, the higher this earnings per share, right, the better it is. But if the earnings per share is going up, if the earnings per share is higher, I mean, between two stocks, stock A and stock B, and so uh, price, earn, uh, price earnings ratio of stock A, uh, if this ratio is uh, greater than price earnings ratio of uh, stock B, which one is a better stock? Hmm? Think about it. Anyone? This is also logical thinking. Suppose their prices are both the same. Uh, let's say both price of stock A, price of stock B, they are the same same price. If that's the case, and then uh, it came out to be like this price earnings ratio of stock A is greater than price earnings ratio of stock B. So which one is better than stock A or stock B? Now, this is one point question. Anyone? Which one is better? Stock A or stock B? Come on. Whenever it requires logical thinking, everyone is just quiet. What does that mean? Nobody can think logically? Huh? Are you guys still there? Anaris, are you there, Anaris? Anaris? Dennis, are you there, Dennis? I guess Anaris is gone. Dennis, are you there? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Sadie is there, Sadie. Okay, Sadie, can you answer that question? Hmm? Between stock A and... Hmm? You are asking now what was the question that you were not paying attention all this time. Huh? I don't, uh, let me let me let me get back to you. I mean, let me go through uh, the other people, and if nobody, if there's nobody else, I will explain. I will uh, explain again. Dennis, are you there? Dennis, Dennis, are you there? I guess Dennis is gone. Elizabeth, are you there? Elizabeth, Elizabeth, she's not here. Eugen, are you there? Eugen, 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 Eugen is here. Okay, Yugen. So, can you answer that question? Hmm. Mm -hmm. How about uh, uh, anybody? You know, you, you're welcome to uh, uh, interject anytime if you have the answer. Harold, are you there, Harold? 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 I guess Harold is not here. Im, uh, Imda, Imdadul, Imdadul, are you there, Imdadul? Okay, uh, Imdadul, can you answer that question? Imdadul, can you answer the question? Jaron. Uh, yes, yeah, Imdadul, Imdadul, go ahead. So, can you answer that question? Uh, so, yeah, I didn't understand the professor question is actually. I was a little bit confused. I didn't know who heard the, the Okay, question. so, so okay. Uh, all right, hang in there then, hang in there. I'm going to okay. uh, go over that question again. Okay. Uh, okay. Because... Uh, Jaron, Jaron, are you there, Jaron? Jaron? 
I guess Gerald's not there. Mariam, Mariam, are you there, Mariam? Probably. Yes, uh, yeah. Okay, Mariam. So, can you answer that question? I'm actually confused too. Okay, so hang in there. Ross, are you there, Ross? Ross, I guess Ross is not. Shirley, Shirley, can you answer that question, Shirley? I'm, I'm here. I didn't hear the question because I just reconnected. My computer was active. Oh, okay. All righty. So, all right. I'll 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 explain one more time. I'll explain just one more time. So, uh, we have two stocks, A and B, and both stocks have the same price, right? Uh, but their price earnings ratio then. Uh, Price earnings ratio is basically a, a market price over uh, earnings per share, right? Market price per uh, divided by earnings per share. So it's the ratio ratio of market price uh, to earnings per share. Now, uh, all the price, although these two stocks have the same price, but the uh, price earnings ratio of A is greater than price earnings ratio of B. So then which one is a better stock? Which one? Which one is better? Hmm? Which one is more valuable? Or which one is, you know, more uh, profitable or productive? Uh, if you type in there, I cannot see, right? What I can see is only, you know, uh, this, all my screen is taken up by this whiteboard right so don't type in there if you are if if you are answering if because i cannot see it i will have to close this whiteboard and go you know uh switch to a uh, uh blackboard so until then i cannot see that so if you have the answer please speak up anyone I said this is one point question. Can anyone answer that question? Which one has the highest shares you said? I'm sorry. Uh, Professor didn't say which one has highest shares. He's asking um highest shares? No, no, there it doesn't matter. You know, I already said this what does this mean? This is the stock price. Both stocks have the same price, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then, uh, but the ratio, price earnings ratio of um, price earnings ratio of stock A is uh, higher than price earnings ratio of stock B. So then it's A. A is so A is better. I think it's B professor. Okay, who, who is that? Jaron? Who said B? Uh, Imdadul. Imdadul. But Imdadul, do you do you have uh, do you have explanation for that? Do you have the uh, logical reasoning behind it? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, because uh, it's a greater than A. That's why I think. And then. No, 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 no. What, what's greater than A? No, they have What's a greater, greater than, than it? Greater than the, uh, the sign over there. So which one is greater? You know, the sign says, you know, don't can't you read the sign? That means this. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Price uh, earnings ratio of A is greater than price earnings ratio of B. Mm -hmm. But then, you said B is better. Yes, uh, because of the sign. I can see the sign. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the sign, but then the sign says the price earnings ratio of A is greater than price earnings ratio of B. So how does how does that explain? How does that explain your choice? Why did you say your you know uh, stock B is uh, better? I mean, what is the reasoning behind it? Oh, it's, uh, I said it opposite way actually. So why is it opposite? Uh... Are you sure? Uh, I'm of not course. Sure, sure, sure. At least you should be sure. You should, you should, you should firmly stand behind your own choice. If you say 
at least you know if you can, even if you cannot explain it, uh, at least if you're you know if you have if you're standing behind if you're formally standing behind your own opinion, then at least uh, at least you know uh, uh, you would earn uh, zero point five. Uh, So, okay, uh, I will give you, at least, you know, um, you cannot explain it, but, but if you cannot explain it, uh, then, you know, uh, 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 that's that's good for nothing. I mean, if you cannot explain it, that's good for nothing, but it's better than picking the wrong answer. So I'll give you, uh, in, in all, I'll give you 0 0.5. It is originally one point question. B is a better stock. Why? So this this keeps coming back over and over. Uh, previously, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, that return on equity, return on asset, uh, question. Uh, I guess Yugen uh, answered, but you know he answered it wrong. Why? Because um, think about it. This ratio says price is the same thing. I always think about the uh, fraction. I mean, this is something you have to really. Uh, uh, I, this is something you have to really, you know, uh, digest. You think just because, you know, uh, this is only outside. I mean, uh, this ratio is greater. Then what does that mean? The same price. The price is the same. Same price. Over earnings per share. This is A. Same price, same price, earnings per share of B, right? Uh, uh, same. I'm sorry, that, that should be A. So think about it. If this ratio were to be, uh, and if price of A and price of B are the same, for this ratio to be like this, that means that means you know uh, this has to be smaller. Earnings per share has to be smaller for A, and earnings per share has to be greater for stock B. Isn't that right? If the price is the same, the only way this ratio would be like this. It's just a mathematical, it's just a law of mathematics. I mean, ratios, when ratios are something like this, if this goes up, if this, when this is the same, if this remains the constant, if this goes up, the whole fraction goes down. Isn't that right? And when this is constant, this goes down, the whole fraction will go up. So, but the then the thing, think about it. What is earnings per earnings per share? Is the profit per share? Do you want the profit per share to be big or small? For the price, uh, we're, we're out of time. So, uh, uh, I mean, regurgitate on it, right? I will, you know, uh, we have to uh, uh, call it a day. But you know, after the class, please regurgitate on it. Would you prefer a stock that has higher earnings for the same price? Or would you prefer a stock uh, that has lower, smaller earnings for the price, for the same price? Huh? Well, that's a very logical reasoning. And um, if you guys are at least 20 years old, and with the 20 years old, a uh, brain of 20 years old, if you cannot reach this, do this, you know, logical reasoning, then that's, and this is a very simple and straightforward logical reasoning. And if you can't do that, uh, that is, that is, you know, uh, that's not good. That's, that's actually, you know, that's, <laughs> that's very disconcerting. Hmm? The brain of 20-something years old can, you know, that cannot process this logical reasoning. 
that is disconcerting. But you know, I it's not impossible. You can do that. You just need to regurgitate on this. So don't just pass it up. After you know, so I'm. Uh, this will be it. Um, so um, please regurgitate on this. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, uh, so, uh, oh, what should I do? Uh, so I'll call it a day. Uh, so have a great, uh, have a great afternoon, everyone. Uh, there will be some. All righty. So uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, there will be, uh, I guess, not today, but you know. Uh, <laughs> will be another we have homework four and five so it will be in the next next you know uh two three days everything will have to come up all righty so uh i will see you guys have a great afternoon and take care okay all right stop recording